it's time to do the forget me not block and if you have not been here yet you want to go to be in my bonnetco.blogspot.com this is Lori Holt's blog and it's where she gives you the directions on how to make each one of the blocks each week I did not make a video and will not be making a video for these blocks right here, the red roses and mums, because they are put together exactly pretty much the same way we did the primrose and the morning glory blocks. So the difference with this block right here, the forget me not, is that this is very tall. Even if you have the big 10 by 16 hoop that comes with the baby lock solaris or the brother luminaire you're not going to be able to do this particular block in a single hooping so what i'm going to do is go ahead and get everything set up in brother canvas so that we have all of our pieces put together and we can get all the fabric cut out this flower from the tip of the petal to the base of the pot is 16 inches so the stem is only 11 it will fit in the big hoop this is actually going to be three hoopings there's a couple of different ways that you can do this and you'll get the idea of uh, you know you can think about it in your head how you want to go ahead and split this up so that you would do one hooping of the top three flowers and leaves and then a second hooping of the bottom two flowers leaves and pot the trick to getting that done is to create a printout of each hooping and i'm going to show you how to do that as well when you're on this blog you can come down here she gives you all of the simple shapes that you need and how many of each one she tells you how long of a piece see this is the quarter inch stem and it's 11 and a half inches long i can do that on the luminaire okay and then i need four two and a half inch quarter inch pieces those are the little stems that go out to the flowers you want to cut your background to 10 by 19. As you scroll down in here, she goes through her method of how she does this. But then as you get into here, she shows you a way to make these handles. Now from handle tip to handle tip is actually six and a half. And I'm just going to go ahead and make this six and a half inches long. I'm going to group it with this one right here and then stretch the whole thing out and keep the width the same as the simple shape. She went ahead and made the whole thing and then she cut it in half. And then from here, the left handle all the way over to your right is six and a half inches long. So that tells you how long to make that piece. I'm going to be using Stitch Artist 2 from Embrilliance. So it's going to remove all those underlying stitches underneath this little vase right here. And then she tells you to put the handles a quarter inch down from the top. She shows you what it looks like on the back. So this gives you an idea of where you're going. You can put the little circles all right inside and you see they kind of stick over the points a little bit. So sometimes it doesn't touch them and sometimes it does. So it's completely up to you. And then she shows how to use her centering rulers in order to get it centered and cut properly. Okay, so now you know where we're going with this. This is gonna be a little bit different, but it's a lot of fun. Once you figure out how this process goes, it's really a lot of fun to do this. All right, so let's jump over to Canvas and build out our forget-me-not block. So I'm coming over to Canvas Workspace and I'm gonna go to the My Projects tab. And the first thing I need is five of the O2 circles. And if this is your first time joining me, what I did was I took Lori Holt's simple shapes. I traced around them on a sheet of printer paper with a, uh, a black Crayola marker. And then I scanned that printer page into the Brothers Scan and Cut and uploaded them here to canvasworkspace.brother.com and numbered and titled each one is cg is calico garden and this is simple shape number one through number seven i do want to say 
right now this is a disclaimer once you digitize these shapes you are not allowed to share them or sell them or anything these simple shapes are the intellectual property of Lori Holt and you are not allowed to share these with anybody otherwise you'll be stealing Lori's designs and of course you certainly are not allowed to sell them at all and so I have had people email me and ask me if I could uh, email the FCM files to them from the scan and cut and I can't because that's Lori's intellectual property okay so there's all the legal disclaimer all right I'm going to come over here to the 01 through 07 on here we have an edit button and we have a download I want to go to edit and the first thing I need to do is to give myself a 24 inch mat because this is a pretty uh, big bunch of fabric that needs to be cut out. So I'm going to come up here to the project tab and where it says area size, I'm going to click on 12 by 24 inches. We need number two. I'm going to take it and grab it and pull it off the mat and I'm going to highlight everything else and hit delete. And I want to save this now. I'm going to come back up here to the project tab and I want to save this as a new project. So I'm going to choose the inbox with an arrow and a plus sign. And I saved it to another project and I forgot to give it a name. So let me, it gave it its own name. That code up there is its own name. I'm going to call it Forget Me Not. There we go. And now I want to go to project and I'm going to overwrite. So it doesn't have a plus sign. It's not going to be new. I'm just going to do an overwrite. Overwrite this project. I could save it as another one. Okay. Now we're on the forget me not. All right. So here we are. And then these centers, if you come back and look here at the blog, the centers are all the same fabric. Let's look at this block. So they're all the same fabric. So I can put all of the centers at one corner of the mat so that uh, they can all be cut out of the same piece of fabric. This is where you really can save fabric because otherwise she wanted you to cut a certain piece of fabric. The side, you know, and let me, let me do something too and explain something. So look how this piece right here when you have a single piece highlighted it says it's 1.56 by 1.55 quite a perfect circle but almost if we come down here to the sewing guide let me go up to the sewing guide I, i'm doing this because people have emailed me and they're confused so see this o2 and that's what this piece is right here this is the o2 that i just pulled over it says two by two cut 21. that doesn't mean that the circle is two by two it wants you to cut 21 two by two inch squares in order to be able to sew the o2 fabric to the interfacing and then clip it and turn it using her method don't be confused that this is a two by two circle because it's not because this one here's a different size and it's a two by two and even though it doesn't look like it it's not to scale there but down here it's 1.56 by 1.55 that's because this is just the shape not the fabric so i need five of these i'm going to right click and duplicate there's two, three, four, and five. Okay, so here we are. Now I'm going to grab all of these. I'm going to right click and group. And we need one piece of fabric now. I like to add an inch or so. I will do a four and a half inch piece. For five, I'm going to make a little note in my book that I am keeping my notes in for my blocks. I need a 4.5 by a, uh, let's go six and a half. I'm going to add an inch or an inch and a quarter on each side. And what that does is it gives me a little bit extra all the way around to make sure I've got enough fabric for it to stick to the mat while the blade is doing its thing and going around. So I'm going to put these down here in this corner. So look, we would have needed over uh, 10 inches square 
of fabric to make these five circles when now we only need four and a half by six and a half. So this method really does save you fabric. Let's go to the next design and that is one of 018. I'm going to go to the My Projects tab. And when we get in this one, now they're kind of down this way. And if I hover my mouse over it, I don't think I can get to it. On this one, you can go down to the bottom here and go to Get More. And it will load more of your projects that you've got. Here it is. This is it right here. And as I hover over it, I can see CG 17 through 19. So I'm going to grab this and pull it over onto the mat. And let me click off of it. I'm going to grab number 18, bring it down, and then I'm going to put my cursor and cover everything else that's on the mat and hit delete. This one and the other outside handle are the same fabric. That's 87 and 88. Let me go ahead and grab uh, 87 and 88 right now so that I can build the handle. And that's on this piece right here. Let me pull this up. Okay. Click off. So 87 is the big one, and 88 is the little one. And now I'm going to highlight everything else and delete. All right. This piece, I'm going to put this in here, and I kind of want it centered. That looks okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight these two, right click and group. All right, now look down here, we're 5.59 by 1.82. I want to stretch this until it's at 6.5 because that's, if you recall from the blog, so we come down here, she's got this zero right here all the way across to six and a half. We're just going to get as close as possible. While it's highlighted, I'm going to come up here to the properties box. I'm going to uncheck maintain aspect ratio, and I want this to be 6.5. Enter. Turn this. Bring it down here. I'm going to right click and ungroup. So now these are the correct size. And I'm going to put this over here. I'm thinking about how these are shaped and the size of the fabric that's going to be needed in order to cut this. So let me highlight these two. Right click. See, if you highlight both of them, it doesn't give you a size because it's two separate objects. If you right click and group like this, now you can see how much fabric you need. So that does it for that one. Now I'm going to right click and ungroup because you never know how stuff is going to need to fit down on the mat. Now I know that this is going to fit and when I put it behind the, the vase, see that? There's our, there's our little vase quarter inch down from the top, just like they want. It's going to look great. I need five of number 41. I'm going to pull these off the mat so I've got enough room to get all these done. I need number 41. That's this guy right here. Okay. And hit delete. I need five of them. Right click duplicate, right click duplicate. I might have to do this in two different cuts. So if I bring it down here while the flowers will fit, see this right here? The fabric is actually going to be bigger. So this won't fit right there. That's kind of the, what you've got to think about when it comes to how these are going to actually be cut out. This isn't going to fit, oh, but that's okay. I'm just going to put it all on the mat. Now we need six of 062, but it's going to be three different fabrics. So let's get our leaves. That's 062. That's this group right here.
That's it for our shapes. Let me do a project and overwrite to make sure I've saved it right here. So now I need to build the quarter inch stem. I'm going to grab this one from the last ones we did. I need the center stem and I need these right here that go behind the center stem. I'm going to highlight everything else on the mat and delete. Okay, let's come back up. This one right here needs to be, let me go to the properties. Uh, make sure that is unchecked. This needs to be 11.5. Okay. So there's my center stem. I need this to be at a 90 degree angle. That makes life easy. It just straightens it up for me. Okay. And then these right here, these need to be two and a half. So... I'm going to go to the properties and 2.5. Okay, we'll just get rid of this one and then right click and duplicate and close that. And I'm going to go to the edit tab and flip horizontal. Right. Right click, duplicate. Right click, duplicate. So you just got to think a little bit differently. Okay, so there's those three go in that direction. This one I want at a 90. Okay, I'm going to do these go in this direction. Right click, duplicate. I cut mine off of a piece of fabric that already has heat and bond on the back. And I just do that. It makes it a lot easier for me. If you want to cut this all out of the same fabric, now you would do it like that and right click and group. And you need a piece of fabric that is 12 and a half by two and a half ish. And that should work. You do need these like this for the digitizing. Um, you really only need one of these and one of these because these other ones can be duplicated in the software. It's just easier to have it duplicated here in Canvas. All right, so let's grab the leaves. We'll grab a little bit of everything and drag it all back on the mat. Okay, we're about ready to do the download. So, okay, these are all the parts and pieces that we need in order to make this block. Looks like we are ready to do the download. I'm going to project and overwrite okay let me make sure let's scroll way out and make sure i got everything i don't have any extras hanging off the mat anywhere if you ever go to download and it tells you that it doesn't fit on the mat scroll way out go into like a 25 percent and if you see something hanging out out here that's your that's the culprit and just move it on the mat or delete it or whatever you need to do and then you are ready to save and download all right so I'm going to go to download, and I'm going to download to PC, forgetmenot.fcm, and it went into my downloads folder, and now I'm going to go to scan and cut transfer. Okay, it's in the virtual pocket from the cloud and ready to be picked up. I'm going to put some heat and bond light on the back of all my fabrics, and then get them arranged on the mat so that things can cut out. And we'll be back with you guys in just a bit.